A new study from the University of Houston reveals a troubling trend in West Texas. Hundreds of so-called zombie wells. Those are previously plugged oil and gas wells that are now leaking oil, gas, and wastewater. And they're posing a serious threat to uh, groundwater and the environment. Now researchers are warning that what's happening in one county could point to a much larger statewide issue. Joining us today to unpack what the research has uncovered and what it could mean for the future of oil field management in Texas are Dr. Michael Nicolaou, who is from UH Cullen College of Engineering, and Mohammed Hasib uh, Mukhtar, who is a reservoir engineer and one of the authors of the study. If you'd like to join the conversation, give us a call or text, 713-440-8870. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having so, us. So, okay, so let's, Zombie Wells is such an interesting name. How did that name even <laughs> come about? They're not really dead. <laughs> right, they're not. I <laughs> thought she was a woman, us. Zombie Wells. <laughs> Zombie Wells, that's such an interesting name. How? Talk to us a little bit, give us some, some background on this so we understand it. Oh. What is a zombie well? Yeah, yeah. so I kind of spoke about it a little bit last last month, and and I asked the hall anybody heard, it's full of petroleum engineers. I I, heard, I said anybody heard of the term zombie wells, and nobody raised their hand. So right. it's a relatively newer term. Mm-hmm. Um, it came from mostly from I think news articles. You can't find that in literatures, uh, but the idea is th- these supposedly plug and abandoned well, which are dead wells, are coming back to life. Um, when you're injecting wastewater because we have to dispose water uh, that we're producing uh, in Texas and everybody and, and everywhere. So we're in disposing it and these this is triggering these old dead wells to come back to life, hence the name zombie. Zombie. It's interesting, but yeah. It so, is interesting. So you can tell us more about coming back to life because there, you know yeah. when you think they're they're coming back to life it's like bubbling up like Jed Clamp had just shot the ground again. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, There's bubble, a reference the young kids are familiar with. I mean are they bubbling up from the bottom to the top or is this inside the, I mean way below oh. ground? Where exactly is the life coming to? Both. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah both. Oh, okay. So zombie walls that we studied are basically we're looking at leakage inside the casing which is inside the well bore. So it could be of two kinds. It could be bubble bubbling up and you you eventually start to see a puddle forming around the well bore, and you see, okay. And, and I think in Pecos County, there's one old 1950s wildcat well that started leaking in 2003, which is now a lake. It's called Bomer Lake. And wow. you can't go, it's not one of those lakes you go to picnics to. It's, it's a lake that is caught enough for people. It's highly toxic uh, salt water with a lot of toxic fumes around it. But yeah, it's, so yeah, it could be that, or it could be in t- as a in a salt water, in a gu- salt water geyser like phenomena where it just blows out, and or could it be leaking like into an aquifer somewhere? That's possible. That is, there's a lot of literature that says this inside th- this groundwater contamination is possible is happening too, but n- not a lot of people are looking at it. We didn't either. <laughs> I mean, that would be the real concern <laughs> right. that it's, yeah, that it's yeah, poisoning yeah. Our, our drinking water. Doctor Cleo, help me understand this though. Is it because something was done? wrong initially with these wells that allowed them now to leak or is it just over time this was going to happen so that any well has the potential of becoming a zombie well in this regard well it's mostly that there is a combination of factors Uh, it's not that there was an initial problem uh, that something wasn't done right uh, when the well was uh, plugged and abandoned But uh, these days, people who are producing oil and gas, uh, oil in particular, near these wells, uh, produce a lot of water as well. And that is wastewater because it's not clean to use it easily. So these people who produce oil have to get rid of the water that was produced at the same time, and they inject it into the ground. That creates conditions that may force these old abandoned wells to start leaking because there is deformation of the ground, there may be small tremors, uh, small earthquakes, so to speak, which are at the level of the shaking you feel when an 18-wheeler goes by. So if this they, may be enough to create a problem. If they disposed of the wastewater in a different way, would that stop these zombie wells from coming into being? Or are other, uh, or is that the, uh, other or things at play? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, th- there are guidelines on how to avoid overpressurizing the disposed water when they inject it in the ground. 
and mitigate the effects of these small tremors that are uh, generated in this process. But regardless, there is already a situation where the ground has already uh, experienced this deformation, and the deformation may cause these zombie wells to come back to life. Mohammed actually got a good collection of those. Can he may say a bit more? Oh, yes. yes. Um, yeah, I mean, coming back to your question, it's a uh, so in like in Delaware Basin, every barrel of oil that you produce, you produce around three to four barrels of produced water. And this water, treating it, this water is very uneconomical, so it has to be disposed. So what they do is they dispose it in shallower formations. And it, it's been done for ages, but with, as you ramp up production, you ramp up water production as well. And then you inject it into groundwater uh, shallower formations. You end up pressurizing those formations, which leads to these older wells. Because Texas, there's, there has been penetration in this area for like 100 years now. So mm -hmm. there's so many old wells, and some of them were plugged at that time. Some, so yeah, it's an integ well integrity issue as well. So these plug moves. And we see even ground deformation. We see like, if we in our paper we have said we have shown sur surface deformation as well. Like when you're when we're injecting more, we see ground move up in that in that part and that to to account like 12, centi 12 centimeters as most as 12 centimeters, which is a lot, which is enough to displays these plugs. So, so then I think the question becomes, we understand the process and understand what's happening. Where does the accountability fall? Who owns these wells? Yeah. And is there, what type of regulation is there to organizations that are producing barrels and they're g going through the process? What, where, who owns the wells and where does the accountability fall? That's another good question. Uh, uh, there's a lot of discussion about who owns the liability. Um, a lot of these wells are also orphan wells. And I'm not sure if you have heard the term orphan wells. It's orphan wells. Is, well, the companies that used to own those wells are done God. now. Yeah. So who owns those wells? No, I don't know. Nobody. Who owns the liability? I don't know. So, so who owns the land? Uh, so the the landowner owns the land, but the wells was supposed to be the – that's how the uh, – the, the land is usually leased. Yeah, that's how the lease works. And word. then it goes back, but – yeah. The agreements vary. It's not a single agreement that everybody follows, and it becomes, as Mohammed said, so, fairly complicated. Mm -hmm. So how many of these zombie wells have you actually identified, and how many would you guess there really are? Oh, so we have um, – so our, we develop a tool that, uh, that, cat that identifies these leaking wells, and we develop a threshold. We assigned a leak score to every plug and abandoned PNA well. And uh, so we th de developed this threshold of 0.7. And out of 3,364 wells, just in Reeves County, we, we identified around 600 wells that's where that, was, that were scored over 0.7. So if anybody... So 20%. Yeah, if anybody has to go and look where the leaks are, just go look at those 600 wells first. And that didn't even count the wells out in the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, uh, I mean, that doesn't even count the wells in Pecos County, in Crane County. I think those there are a lot of wells there too, and Loving County. So, how so. concerned should people be about this? Realistically, should people be saying, you know what, this is something that we need to be talking about more, and this is something that needs to be brought to the forefront? Yes, it, it's something that needs attention. I wouldn't hit the panic button, but yes. it needs attention and. The good thing is that these days we have tools, uh, either computational tools and information. We have information from satellites. You can fly drones above areas and do a very detailed analysis and all these things. So you can start looking at potential candidates that may create problems with wells coming back to life. And so then what do you do about it? Mm -hmm. uh, that, well, you can test the well. There are ways to test whether the plug is still as strong as it's supposed to be, or whether there is there is a risk, or whether it's leaking already and maybe you don't see it, but pretty soon you're going to actually see the leak. Well, do you replug it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Ah, okay. Yes. There's yeah, absolutely. There's two ways. Find somebody you, to own it first, right? Yeah. Usually, government takes the bill, <laughs> so yeah. state the table. But yeah, you either replug it or one thing that we are trying to trying our model to to predict is. Let's dispose the water in a way that we don't we see these problems less and less. Like, we let's not dispose it. 
let's dispose it in an optimized way. Yeah. Throw this much volume there, this much volume here at this rate. And I think that's that's something we're building towards. Is there any way to clean the water? I'm sure you know oh, there is. water is worth more than oil. Mm. I mean, really. Oh, there is ways, but it's not. It doesn't it, make money. It, it doesn't, exactly. It's all yeah. a matter well, of cost-benefit analysis. What I understand, so, so isn't cheap. Texas, aren't we in need of water in the yeah. state of Texas? Yeah, well, water is worth more than oil yeah. by the barrel. I, I know people that are buying land just for the water. Mm. But but it has to be clean. Remember, our listeners probably know of the uh, hydraulic fracturing, the fracking case. Yes. That's what fracking. I wanted to ask you Small about. earthquakes were triggered, but it turned out those small earthquakes were actually triggered by the disposal of the water used during fracking because you cannot... Uh, and that, help it clarify, too. Uh, we've seen folks in our chat group also saying injecting water is fracking, right? Isn't, is it similar in the idea of, and there are laws against fracking in some areas? No, 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 this is not from fracking. Fracking deliberately involves injecting water at very high pressure to frack the rock. Then you pull out the water and you have to dispose it. Well, you reuse it several times and eventually you dispose it somewhere. It's that disposal that if not uh, done very well, it may trigger small earthquakes. But these are old wells, older than probably oh, yes. even fracking that you're talking about. Uh, like, many yeah. of them are decades old. Yes. yes. So yeah. these zombie wells aren't really new to the scene. They're abandoned wells, more or less. Yeah, they're right. old and Not more or less. Uh, precisely. Yeah. Precisely abandoned. And that's why they're people, not producing That's anything. why it's hard to find the owner because yes. they're either dead or broke. Yes. And so yeah. it's going to come to the state. But for, first of all, they've got to be identified. Oh yes, and that's yes. what you're that's what you're here to do. Oh yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what you're trying to do. Yes. Yeah. So yes. as as this industry continues to grow and they continue to the in in Texas and continue to put water back into the ground to dispose of it and more of these wells continue to get uh, in, infected, whatever is the right term for it. <laughs> is that a zombie term? I don't know. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Yes. I'm, I'm just curious what you see as the end game because if there's no incentive to the industry to do it differently. How do you motivate them to not, they've got to dispose of the water somewhere. What are other alternatives? How does this change? Uh, well, that, that, that is a bigger problem uh, in the area of sustainability and how right. we use our resources. The disposal of water right now can be done very well without creating serious harm but to it. anyone. And you can even, well, if you want to pay a lot in energy and money, you can even recycle the water. I mean, we have the technology. People in the space station would recycle liquids uh, to, to have drinkable water mm -hmm. for a very long time. So it's well known, but it's a cost-benefit idea. We do have a call if you'll slip your headphones oh. on. Yep, uh, we have a call from Jeff from Northwest Houston. Jeff, welcome to Hello Houston. What is your comment or question for our panelists today? Hey, hello. Well, if you don't get the money ahead of time from anybody drilling these wells, you're probably not going to get it because so many of them go bust or dry, and it's too late. And as far as you know, asking people to regulate uh, the, the current wastewater now and stuff like that, yeah. again, that costs money. And the current uh, government is pro-business. When pro-business is we keep as much money as we can, Mm -hmm. And uh, we spend as little as possible. So um, good luck with, with all this. I feel sorry for the people in the general vicinity because they're going to end up hurting. Mm. Well, thanks, Jeff. And that goes along with this question on YouTube. So should we now make having a way to process the water part of the contract to use the land for oil purposes? Um, like clean up behind yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if that's possible or if there is economic uh, justification for it. Uh, but I think the caller made a good point and there's discussion like, when you give out these leases, um, a, a chunk of money is left for the the abandonment process. I think mm -hmm. I think that's something that has lagged initially. Um, I'm not sure how these cash flow wor things work and uh, I've not looked into it, but there's been discussion on this. The, on this. The, the very same problem actually appeared in the chemical industry, the downstream chemical industry, making chemicals and mm -hmm. plastics and all that. And they would usually build a plant near a river and they would dump everything to the river or to a lake. Well, along came EPA and other regulations. And long story short, these plants cannot now dump dirty water or any other waste to the nearby uh, natural mm -hmm. resources, they have to clean it up. A similar thing can be done 
for any other industry, including the oil and gas industry, to the extent that it's done sensibly and um, preserves resources and justifies economic uh, analysis. Well, do they know about it? I, I, I respect the oil and gas industry. I think they try to do a great job of cleaning up after themselves. Do, do they know about this situation, the ones that, that can do something about it? Yeah, I mean, uh, more or less. More the, or less. The, a, I mean, they a strong already know. term around here, more They already or less. know, but nobody wants to. I mean, I don't want to say uh, if they want to take liability, but bigger companies, obviously, they clean up after themselves and they're doing what they have to do. But the problem is much more widespread, and there's so much, so many well bores that are not owned by anyone. And yeah, truly the, zombie. Truly zombies. Yes. They are truly zombies. <laughs> Dr. Michael Nicolau is from the University of Houston's Colon College of Engineering, and Muhammad Hasib Mukhtar is a reservoir engineer. Thank you both for joining us today on Hello Houston. Thank, Thank you for having us. Good luck. Good luck.